Shalom brothers and sisters, all honor, glory, and praise goes to the Most High Yahweh in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. I'm Brother Jedaniah, welcome to another video. Brothers and sisters, I want to help y'all a little bit more today and show you how we are made the righteousness of Yahuwah. How we are made righteous that end result of being in Hamashiach, being inside of him. See, we become like him, like-minded. And as he walked, we walk. And sometimes it takes a lot of study and practice and training to get to that final result that final point where you are the walking word yourself imitation mini me if you have your bibles close by i want you to pick it up grab it go grab your bible and pick it up flip through the pages you see all of that that is all in you when you're in him all of that is in you right now. The spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness will lead and guide you how to walk in holiness and righteousness without that book. You see that book that you're holding? It is only a foreshadow of good things to come. We was never supposed to have written books until sin came. When sin came, our bodies became corrupted and so have our minds. So we needed not only a verbal record to pass along, but a written record to pass along to remind us of holiness and righteousness. And that was the such with Moses. When now Hamashiach has come, we have the Holy Spirit sent to us as a reminder to walk in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will bring holiness and righteousness to us through and in Him, brothers and sisters. This is part of the mysteries of Paul's letters being unlocked. The understanding of what Moses brought in the written form and what Hamashiach brought in the spiritual form. So I want y'all to keep this in mind as you reading the Old and New Testament. It will shed light on Paul's letters as well. And uh, give you understanding what Paul is talking about over here or what he's talking about over there. If you keep this in mind, that the, the new spirit man, the new spirit woman, walks in the spirit of holiness and righteousness now. We are made the righteousness of Yahweh now. We have his spirit in us and that spirit will lead and guide us into holiness and righteousness. Whether we got the book or not. But before that, there was Moses. There was the written record. We needed reminders from a written form. Verbally passed down from generation to generation. But now our righteousness has come. Hamashiach, he has died on that tree. Was risen on the third day. To fulfill 
the sacrifice for sins forever and to be made our righteousness. And because of that, he went up to the throne room of the Most High, presented himself as a wave offering, like the Le uh, Levites had to do a wave offering for sin. He presented himself as a wave offering. He was accepted. Therefore, he was able to send his Holy Spirit down. We are not under the law. We are under grace. We are under Hamashiach, brothers and sisters. That's why the Moses said, Hear ye my son. When uh, Moses and Elijah was on that mountain with Hamashiach during that vision, when Peter, James, and John was there with him, and they was like, Hey, let's build tabernacles for all three. The Most High intervened and said, No. Hear ye my son. So you're you're now in him. You're under him. But everything that was the word before is still Hamashiach. Wasn't he the word made flesh? It's still him. With a few changes, that's all. The new covenant is now made perfect through Hamashiach. In that uh, he became the final sacrifice for all sin. Brothers and sisters. And I don't know if y'all know this. He didn't stop all sacrifices. There's going to be sacrificing. That's going to crank right back up. When he returned. And I know y'all a little bit confused about that. But. Uh, the Gentile sacrifice is going to be acceptable now on the altar. There is sacrifices for, you know, th there is thank you offerings that was given. It wasn't just sacrificing for just sin alone. There was other offerings that took place. Y'all need to read about those things. Hamashiach came to be the final sin offering to cover our sins that we may be acceptable to the Most High. He didn't stop all the other ones. So keep that in mind as you're reading, brothers and sisters. So every time you lift up the buck, remember. We're not under the letter of the law. We're under the spirit. We're under Hamashiach. We're under grace. We're under the most highest. Holy spirit. Who is sent to us to help us. Walk in holiness and righteousness. Until his son return. And come, you know give us the fullness of that spirit. And then. We have the law, statutes, commandments embedded in us, and we will walk in every last part of it without any book. We will no longer need to teach uh, each other the book, because it's going to be in us to do them automatically. That's the new covenant to come, brothers and sisters. So. We're kind of like um, in between this process, you know, with our punishment going on right now. So we still need the book to read, study, learn, and we need the Holy Spirit to help us walk it out and to um, teach us as well. So you still are to trust the Holy Spirit before you trust anything else. And that's the way I've learned, brothers and sisters. Even when it came to the strong concordance, all these lexicons and all that, I didn't No, The Holy Spirit always came first with the discernment. Because even when I was reading some of those, and I'm like, okay, I need the Holy Spirit to discern which answer it is. Because they, they give so many different little answers. If you just pick the first one, you might you might fall off. 
So you call upon the Holy Spirit to help you understand which definition fits that word for the verse, for the chapter. And the Holy Spirit will help you. I done had people and I done seen them make videos. They picked the wrong um, definition and they made a whole new doctrine out of it. Trusting in the um, lexicon and the strong concordance like that. When it was your, you know, these are some masons and satanic people who made those books. You need the Holy Spirit to give you the right discernment for the right definition that fits not only the verse, but the chapter. And whatever the subject is it's talking about could be expanded upon in the next chapter or the chapter before. So yes, you still need the Holy Spirit when you're looking at these different books. Because your trust has to be in, in what was sent to you first, brothers and sisters. And the Most High built that understanding right from the start. Even before I knew it was a Hebrew. And when I got into looking into these strong, and I'm like, man, why are y'all trusting these strong concordance and all these other things? I know they got some good definitions in them. But how are you going to know which one is which or which one to go with for this? That's where the spirit of sermon comes in. And I've seen many Hebrews go off those charts, man, because of these concordances. And they, they pick the ones that fit their narrative when it should have been the other one. And they, they end up being thrown off completely. And I see a lot of this going on. I don't want y'all to end up like that. We have to have trust, faith, in the Most High, through His Son, and the Holy Spirit sent to us. You stick with that, you, well, your flesh still could get in the way, and you could go wrong. So I'm not going to say you won't go wrong. But if your flesh doesn't go get in the way, then you won't go wrong. And sometimes my flesh get, gets in the way, brothers and sisters. And uh, it, it happens. Because I'm a work in progress just like you. I'm working on these things. I'm working on learning how to walk in the pure spirit. That's a long process, brothers and sisters. Ain't nothing you just start and figure out in one day. I've been doing this for like uh, five years. I've been practicing walking in just the pure spirit and trusting the spirit. And it helps build um, faith and trust up in you and helps build up your hearing of the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. Now, we know that the book was given to us for edification, right? Where is that? Is it 2 Timothy or 1st? Let me psych myself out sometimes. Let's see. Oh, 2 Timothy. Alright, all scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Yahweh, or woman, male and female is man, that the man of Yahweh may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Uh, another thing I just want to add real quick. When you see man, it's talking about the male and female too. It's not just talking about man. You know, this includes the male and female. Now, in some cases, it is just talking about the man. But that's where you have to discern 
which you know if it is it just talking about the man or is it talking about the male and female when it says man all right uh, so since we are in the flesh the new covenant isn't like fully implemented in us because we still need to read the book we have a Holy Spirit that is son as a helper to help us bring into remembrance what we learned while reading. But in the future, when Hamashiach returned, he's going to put the law, such commandments, testimonies, all of this in us. And we will walk them out automatically. We will do them. And not one of Yashara shall be lost from that moment forward. All of our offspring will have the law of such commandments in them. And not one of us will be lost, brothers and sisters. We're going to walk in pure righteousness and holiness. Which means you're not going to be no cruel slave master like some of these camps are teaching out there. When you have the full spirit of the Most High, you're going to be like Him. You're going to be like the Son. You're not just going to go out there and treat your servants and handmaids like dirt. You're going to be under the spirit of righteousness. Now these caps who are teaching those things, they got a different spirit upon them. And if they don't repent, they're going to go where most of the people they're talking about are going to go. They're going to be right along with them. And they're thinking that because they are following the law that they're going to make it. Let me pull out my chart. Okay, I'm going to try to pull out this chart in my videos. Every video if I can toward the end of it. Yahweh's salvation is by faith alone, brothers and sisters, not by the works of the laws even though faith without works is dead this is freely given to you up here it's free brothers and sisters it's a free gift by your faith alone your faith is accounted for righteousness and then the father grants you grace and mercy which comes the blessings and covering of uh, of sins by the blood then comes the promises the covenants rewards under Yahusha and in him and he imparts the Holy Spirit well this should be up here Let's switch these around he imparts the Holy Spirit to you which is the spirit of righteousness and holiness of the Most High and you put on a, a love for Yahweh and a love for your neighbor. And you start walking in the fruits and gifts of the Spirit. You can do all of that naturally through just the Holy Spirit alone. It can't be done without any script, any book, just through the Holy Spirit. That's the final man and woman that the Most High is creating. We won't need a script. But anyway, this is all freely done for you, given by the Most High. Now, the Holy Spirit binds you and is the glue to step number two. But you can't have one without the other. Because once you receive that free gift in the Holy Spirit, which binds you to the second step, you start repenting and confessing all your sins and you start studying the word and you are washed clean converted and purged out by the word and testimonies through the holy spirit which is your helper which is sent to help you and you start obeying the law statutes, commandments participating in the sabbaths and the feast days and observing his judgments which brings upon a healthy fear 
and you start producing the works of righteousness. And along the way, you, you start fasting and praying. And these things help drives out demons. It helps healing. It helps your uh, questions get answered. Any questions you have for the Most High, fast and pray, just like the prophets did. Then the Most High tell them, hey, go over here in this field for a while, fast, eat these flowers. Then he'll bring the answers. That's all I did. I, I, I copied what they did. That's what they. That's what it was done with them for. For us to copy. And once you start doing these things, you'll discover faith without works is truly dead. Because you know, though you have all of this, and you don't start producing these things then you really don't have this. <laughs> well, let's just say if you have uh, a self-faith and you account that for righteousness yourself, then you start saying you got all these things and you start walking in this Without the Holy Spirit sent to you as a helper, you'll go astray. There are some camps and organizations that are like that. They have a self-faith and they proclaim all these things and they start doing all these things, but they don't have the real spirit of the Most High in them. You know them by their fruits. You know them by their fruits. They have the spirit of the Most High, they produce the fruits. And uh, use the gifts of the Spirit. And especially if someone is sitting there glorying in their flesh, glorying in the circumcision, saying, Oh, I'm saved because I'm circumcised. Paul was trying to bring that explanation that no. You know, just because you're circumcised doesn't mean you're saved. You can't glory in your flesh and say, or in your skin color. You can't glory in your skin color. I'm melanated. That means I'm, uh, I'm saved and I'm going to the kingdom. There's so many people off track right now. Glorying in the flesh. Glorying in circumcision, glorying and skin color, melanated thing. You're going to be glory yourself right into the pit with all that self-righteousness. So no, you can't glory in your flesh at all <clears throat> and say that you're saved, that you got this. Now, this is part of the new covenant here. This is the new covenant understanding, brothers and sisters. Right here. With, with this, you will produce all these things here. Because faith without works is dead. And you'll be walking in the spirit of the Most High. But remember, these things are freely given by your faith alone. And I put love up there because love covered all things. If you figure out how to walk in the, in the spirit of love, love Yahweh and your neighbor as yourself, you'll fulfill all of this automatically. It'll be done. You, you will work no harm toward the father or rebellion, and you won't work no harm toward your neighbor or rebellion toward your neighbor. Because you'll be walking in the spirit of love. Therefore you'll be fulfilling these things here. <sighs> I wonder if I should put that up here. Walking in the spirit of love. I mean it's with the Father's spirit too. Hmm. 
I'll think about that one. I might add it to the list later. But I just want to go over this to give y'all understanding. And keep these, keep these things in mind while you're reading the scriptures. While you're reading, write down this list. You can add to it, add scripture to it or whatever. However you want to do this, just make this like a small blueprint. And remember, there are people out there doing number two and claiming they have number one. They're doing this. They're doing this right here. And they're saying they got number one because they're doing this. No, it don't work that way. It, this this doesn't come first. This is second. Obeying the law, statutes, commandments, participating in the Sabbath and feast days doesn't mean you're automatically saved, brothers and sisters. Salvation is freely given by Yahweh. It's his to give. It's not yours to take because you follow the letter of the law. It's not, you're not saved through this. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do these things. I'm saying you're not saved by this, any works of the flesh. This is freely given by the Most High through his son who established it brothers and sisters but look at Abraham and the faith of Abraham he was given all this by his faith alone before anything was given to Moses on the mountain he was blessed by the most high he was given promises, covenants, brothers and sisters, before he cut his flesh. That's why I put circumcision down here, second, number two. Should have created a second thing for this. Let me cut that. Put that down here. But it's in this category down here because everything up here is freely given by the Most High. And this is what we work out, work out our salvation. And it's step, step number two. Through repentance, confession of sins, studying the word, utilizing the Holy Spirit as our helper so that we can uh, be washed, clean, converted, and purged out by the word and testimonies. And uh, start doing the laws, statutes, commandments, Sabbath days, feast days, and judgments, producing the works of righteousness. All right, brothers and sisters, tell me what you think in the comment section below. I really like to hear your thoughts. And if you want to add to either section, put that in the comment section. I still got to go back on another video. And some of you gave me some uh, good ammo I was supposed to add to this list and I ain't added it yet so I'm gonna do that today and go back on that first video I did yeah I was salvation by faith alone and I was been supposed to do that <laughs> all right brothers and sisters uh with that I'm gonna say shalom